Okay, so here we go looking at the emission spectra um, and how that gives us proof for the structure of atoms in terms of their electron configuration. So we talked about the emission spectra being the pattern of bright lines that we see um, as a result of electrons absorbing energy, um, being excited and then returning back down to their ground state and they emit the energy that they absorbed. So we're going to look at this in terms of what that means for our structure and how it can help us um, predict things about elements. So you may recall that um, previously we've looked at the Bohr model of the atom where electrons orbited around a nucleus in set energy levels. So he proposed that these orbits were different distances from the nucleus and corresponded to different energy levels within the atom. Okay, so um, he, this one here, that there were different energy levels that correspond to different energy um, levels that the electrons can inhabit. So the larger the orbit, orbit so the larger the radius, um, therefore the larger the circle, the higher the energy level. Okay, so electrons that are in shell 3, which is further from the nucleus, would have a larger orbit and would be at a higher energy. Um, so it's possible for electrons to move between these energy levels by absorbing or emitting energy. So as an electron absorbs energy, it moves to a higher energy level, and then it re-emits that energy when it goes down. So when we look at the Bohr models that we should be familiar with, he referred to these as electron shells. So lithium has two shells, shell 1 and shell 2. Uh, sodium has three. And then if we go up to potassium, it has four shells. And hopefully you're familiar with the idea of electron shells. So essentially what this means is we start to define what shells mean in terms of energy. Shells are physical regions in space around the nucleus where we can find electrons and they correspond to an actual distance away from the nucleus. We give them the number n to denote shell number or otherwise known as principal quantum number and then the closest shell has the lowest number and the lowest energy. So we always fill our electrons from the lowest energy first and then out. So we will put electrons in our principal quantum number one, shell one, then into shell two, shell three, and shell four. Okay, um, and that gets us about as far as what we're going to go. Um, remembering that the shell numbers correspond to the rows in our periodic table. So if something is in row four, it will have its valence electrons in the fourth shell. So what this means is when we look at the emission spectra, and um, we will look at some of these in class, but you're also familiar with them from doing flame color tests, the emission spectra observed for elements can be related to the energy levels that we see within the atoms. So when we heat an atom um, or an element, um, the electrons can absorb this energy in the form of heat or light and then cause them jump to a high energy level. So they can start on the lowest energy here, which would be our principal quantum number one, and they can jump up to any available energy level within the shell. So they can jump up and then they can come back down. They might come back down in stages, but each time they come down, they're going to be emitting energy. They're going to be emitting photons of light. So when the electron returns, the energy is emitted as a particular wavelength and the different energy transitions in an atom give rise to different emission spectra. And this is important. So if the electron jumps up to the third shell and then comes down to the first, that energy emitted will be much greater than if it jumps up and then comes back down to the second. So we need to be familiar with the emission spectrum lines and what it means for the energy levels. Um, once upon a time, if you look at older resources, you will have had to have known the names for the different series of lines. We no longer have to know the names, but you do need to be familiar with where they turn up. So if the transition, so remembering emission is going to have the line down, this is going to be emission because that's going from a higher energy level to a lower energy level and the energy difference is emitted, it's spat out. So if we have electrons that absorb energy all the way up to infinity, this is ionization. The electron is lost from the atom, so it doesn't come down. But if electron absorbs up any one of uh, the n 
2 through to 7 energy levels, it can come back down in stages. If it comes back down to n equals 3, so n equals 3, those energy transitions are going to be small and they will emit in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. If it comes back down to n equals 2 from any energy level above it, it will be in the visible region. So this is the light that we see when we see in flame colors um, because we see that green or blue or orange or red light. Um, so this is where we can see the difference in the light that is admitted. And then if they come from any um, level higher than n equals 1 and return to 1. As you can see, this energy gap here is significant. That's the largest energy gap. And returning back down to n equals 1 will always put light in the UV region. So you do need to know that n equals 3 is going to produce light in the infrared, n equals 2 is going to produce light in the visible, and n equals 1 is going to produce light in the ultraviolet region. So what this means is that the different transitions, depending on how much energy the electron um, absorbs, as it returns, it will produce different lines in the emission spectrum, which is why we see more than one line, because there's a lot of different possible combinations um, as the electrons return back to their ground state. Okay, so... Um, just make sure that you've got this idea locked in um, and then that's all I'm going to do in this video. So you need to know that n equals 1, n equals 2 and n equals 3. Just like to point out as well that if we look, if we'll get rid of all this, um, if we look at the way the lines are drawn, okay, and you should be able to sketch this line diagram. If we look at the way that the lines are drawn, you can see that the lines get closer together the higher the energy. We call this convergence. So the lines converge, the energy levels converge as the energy gets higher. So as we move into the higher and higher energy levels, they get closer and closer together, okay? Which is why those transitions from n equals 5 or n equals 3 down to n equals 2 are much smaller. So they give us a lot less energy back. So remembering shells, large energy levels within an atom, that transitions of electrons between shells, between excited and ground states, gives us different emission lines. And that's our emission spectra.